We are talking to Katrina Sawa, who is a speaker and an author and so much more. Um, she's known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach because she helps entrepreneurs make more money doing what they love and fast. She's the creator of the Jumpstart Your Marketing System, a tell it like it is speaker, seven times international best-selling author with 11 books, including Love Yourself Successful, Jumpstart Your New Business Now, and the Jumpstart Your fill in the blank compilation book series. So Katrina has a no nonsense approach to showing entrepreneurs how to develop consistently profitable businesses, implementing proven marketing and business strategies. She's been featured on the Oprah and Friends XM radio network, ABC, the CW and dozens of influential podcasts and radio shows. Katrina was awarded the National Collaborator of the Year Award by the Public Speakers Association and a two-time nominee for the Wise Women, Wise Woman Award by the National Association of Women Business Owners. She speaks to groups of all sizes, holds live training events annually, and she's the founder of the International Speaker Network. Today, we're talking about how to jumpstart yourself as a speaker to grow your business. Welcome, Katrina. I'm so glad to be here. And all the speakers have been really amazing. And I know many of them. So the other ones I already reached out to so we can connect. That's, that's awesome. That's great. It, it has been a, a very interesting and enlightening day. Um, and more to come. Uh, so I'm happy to be a part of your international speaker network. It's, it's such a great group and valuable resource. Um, one of many of your business pillars. Um, and I know you've been, you know, coaching business and marketing for several years, but tell us how your speaking focus began. Yeah, so I was speaking actually before I started my business. I've been in marketing and sales jobs for quite some time. And I was a marketing director at a retirement community, and I was an advertising rep at a local newspaper here in Sacramento, California. And <clears throat> I had to speak when I went out to networking events. I was one of the you know, ones that would do the outreach in the community. So I had to speak there. I had vendor booths there and those kinds of companies. And so it was a really easy transition. Not easy. It wasn't easy, but it was easier than a lot of people leaving their job and going into their own business. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't think people typically think of speaking as a content marketing strategy. Why do you think it's so effective? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Everything is recorded, right? Like this is the number one fastest path to cash. Everything we've talked about today is so important to building a business. And frankly, we have to do all of it, which is kind of crazy and overwhelming, right? As an entrepreneur, we have 42 hats to wear. Um, but speaking is, you're speaking on video, you're speaking on Insta Reels and Insta Live. You're speaking uh, to people in video to your uh, list. You're speaking in writing, really. I mean, to your email list. So, uh, I mean, it's all it's all speaking. It's it's getting people to connect with you. But by pressing the record button like you just did, this creates a piece of content. So this piece of content can be sold, like you're offering the VIP tickets for recordings, right? And it can also be put up on YouTube for trainings. It could be given as a bonus uh, to one of your programs or trainings. Um, I record everything I do and I've been doing it for 19 years. I have so much content, it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and it just, it, it helps you showcase your expertise. And um, I think so many people are afraid of speaking that if they see someone up speaking, it's like you have kind of instant recognition or um, you, you know do. What I mean? just that, that, cre that credibility factor. <clears throat> so what kind of, other than this is obvious here, but what other kind of speaking opportunities are out there? Well, well let's put COVID aside. Yeah. Well, there's, <laughs> There's lots of speaking engagements during COVID. Oh my God, I made more money ever during COVID than I had before. And I was traveling all over the country speaking at live events. And I just had to sit in my own house and do speaking gigs and do them differently and host my own virtual events instead of live events. But 
it can be very, very lucrative. And there's three different types of speaking that one can do. One is what all of us are here to do, which is speak for free. We speak for free out of the goodness of our heart, but also in hopes that a lot of the people who watch will come to our website and get on our email list, get our free thing, come connect with us on a phone call or connect on social media, right? So we're here for the call to action at the end in hopes that you like what we're talking about and you're gonna come want more. That's free speaking for lead generation. Then the other one is paid speaking. Everybody comes to me and says, well, I, I want to be a paid speaker. Okay, uh, but who pays for speaking gigs these days? Well, corporate does and associations and larger conferences will pay keynotes to come in and even pay workshops, pe uh, people to come in and do workshops. And I've been paid to speak before, but I, it's not my main speaking um, opportunity because I can make a lot more money in the follow-up, frankly, selling my programs, products, coaching, and mastermind. Um, and then the third one is pay to play speaking. And a lot of people don't think about this is why would I pay to speak? I'm giving you content. Well, if someone's going to put a room together with 300 of my ideal prospects or more, or even a hundred people or more of my ideal prospects and clients, I might pay to be on their stage because it is not an easy thing to put butts in seats at an event. Right? I do events and it is one of, it's one of the most challenging things is to fill in a paid event for enrollment. So there's three types of speaking and the free one, if you have the right programs, products and services and pricing in the back end and you know what you're doing and you can speak to sell or speak to offer uh, is the most lucrative, frankly. So maybe you just started down that path, but what do people need to do in order to get, um, to get booked to speak? Yeah, so you need to get prepared uh, and most people are not prepared. And if I said, hey, I want to have you on my talk in two weeks, I need your speaker bio, your headshot and your description of what you're speaking on uh, with your talk title. P the majority of people out there would be like, uh, OK, let me get back to you on that because they don't have it ready to go uh, and they can't just copy and paste it into an email or send you a speaker one sheet or whatnot. You have to get that stuff ready. You have to. You have to have the right talk description with a hooky attention getting title, something really wow, right? That's really cool. And then a couple paragraphs, three to five bullets of what they're going to learn. And so many people, I, I mean, I book speakers at my speaker network and they send me the description that says, I'm going to talk about this and I'm going to share this and I'm going to talk about whatever. It's like, no, I can't copy that into the website to promote you and have it say, I'm going to share, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's just, you don't know what you don't know. I'm not trying to make fun, but you don't know what you don't know. So you have to get prepared and have these little pieces ready to just at the willing to go. And then that won't stop you then from applying to speak, right? Because there's a lot of online forms that we have to fill out to apply to speak at some conferences. And you have to have that stuff ready to copy and paste into the form. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's good. I've, I've done a fair bit of speaking myself and, it, and it's way easier to do copy and paste than, than creating from scratch. Can, can you talk to a speaker one sheet? What, what exactly would you put in a speaker one sheet? Yeah, so I talk about it in two different ways. So there's two different types of speaker one sheet. You've seen the, the glossy two-sided big picture of the person. And I, I don't have any to show you at the moment, but let's pretend like this is the speaker one sheet. Okay, it's a magazine I have half and half of my friend. And this is the back and she's talking about her topics and she has some testimonials and her contact information back here. And then this is her bio or whatnot. That's a speaker one sheet if it's a one page, but that is used, I tell people, you know, only create that because it costs money for a graphic designer to do that. Only create that if you're really going to mail something off or if you're going to have a table display in the back of the room and there's going to be other speaker bookers in the room, then you can have your one sheet to pass out in that regard. Or you can send it out in a media kit with, with your book and your one sheet or something and a cover letter to ask people to book you as a speaker. So that's when you need that kind of a sheet. I actually have like a 17 page word document and that's it. That's, I mean, it has some graphics on it from my, like my website header. It has a cover letter. It has 
uh, all my contact information. It has all my social media links and all my websites. It has a couple headshots in it just to showcase a couple options. And then it has about eight to 12 topic titles to, and descriptions. So that's a lot of pages of topic descriptions. You don't have to have that many, um, but you got to get started somewhere, right? With one or two. And then it also has like testimonials and references and uh, a whole bunch of other things, including questions that, because you get up booked on a podcast and people say, well, send me 10 questions that I can ask you, right? So I've already pre-written and done all of that work and it's all in one document. So if someone says, hey, I want you to speak. Okay, great. Here's my speaker sheet, pick a topic and let me know, right? And I don't have to send them anything else and they are good. And so I'm like a favorite to get booked because I'm ready, I'm prepared. I have my shit together, right? I got my stuff together. And <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the difference. I don't think, I don't even have a glossy one sheet, frankly, because I don't look for those. I don't send them to, that's not my target audience. That's not your target. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, like you said, for starting out, you should at least know, um, uh, I'd call it a signature talk, but not everybody has that particularly. Um, but like three topics that you that would suit a certain audience because you want to speak, not just for the sake of speaking. You want to speak in front of people that you know you want to potentially um, sell to. Um, but you need to have a little. I would think you need to have a little bit of flexibility because the event organizer. Um, that will affect the decision of the event organizer just to have some variety. Yeah. So I talked a little bit about fear of speaking um, and we've talked a little bit about fear all day, actually. <laughs> uh, how do people get comfortable enough to do a talk? Well, honestly, you just have to practice. It's like riding a bike. It's like anything else you do. You just have to practice. So you have to get started somewhere right? Get started sharing with a small group. So all of us belong to some sort of networking event or networking group, right? Go to some of your networking groups and say, hey, can I present to the group and start practicing my talk? You can join Toastmasters and, and practice there and they'll help you fine tune your abilities and get your confidence up. So, and help fine tune your topic a little bit so that you have more confidence. When you have clarity on what you're speaking on and where it's leading, people, then you have more confidence to get out and talk about it. Um, one of the things though, in the beginning that I didn't do very well, and a lot of people don't, I think when they start out because they, it's hard to talk about yourself was telling my story. So I was really good at giving great content. Let me just give you the six tips to this and da, 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 da. Let me tell you how to do this and all this nitty gritty. Like I was, people would be like, oh my God, that's so great, Katrina but they knew nothing about me, right? Because I would skip over the story or I would just like a little snippet. Oh, here's my dog, here's my husband. Okay, now let's tell you what you need to know, right? Because, but don't do that. You can't do that because stories sell and stories is how people get to know, like, and trust you. So even here, I'm like, oh, I gotta tell more about my story. <laughs> <laughs> I can, to I can totally relate. I can totally relate. But yet there's a crossover too, because you can talk, too much about yourself you know I've seen lots of presentations where okay are we getting to the topic yet I don't know I don't need to see all your travel pictures and you know those yes and kind the of things but so there's a bit of a balance but you're trying to build rapport and a relationship with these people so they can get to know you um it's not just about what you know right so that, yeah that's, that's important for sure. But it is about, it is about practice. I remember years ago, I think one of my first personal development forays was with Dale Carnegie. And one of the things I've learned from that probably almost 30 years ago was whenever you have a chance to speak, do it. And that could be just introducing someone at a dinner, right? Like reading off of a script or whatever, but just being upright <laughs> and speaking out loud and that and just keep doing those kinds of things I used to do that in corporate it's like oh can I speak oh let me do that 
you know? So yeah, and some people have a fear of like speaking for a long period of time and they'd rather speak for a short period of time. For me, it's actually more challenging to speak for three to five minutes than it is for 30 or 60 because 30 or 60, it's like, whew, okay, I have time to tell my story. I have time to get some content in. I have time for a call to action. Uh, and, but in a five minutes, like, how do I give them so much content and get them to like, trust and connect with me and give them a call to action in five minutes or less? Like that's, you know, so some people love it, but then they, so they'll only tell their story or they'll only give the content or they'll only have the call to action. You're right. And so you have to be able to scale your talk for a five minute, a 10 minute, because there's a lot of times now on Zoom where there's speakers. I was on a call earlier uh, this week where this, there was three speakers, but uh, they were only five minute snippets, right? And I've been on a few calls like that because yeah. a lot of times people don't want to have a really long speaker on these calls. And so they'll do like five minute snippets. So you really have to have it down to where you can wow them with one tip and take them to a page on your website for Zoom, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, the snippet is, is a great word there. I, I'm familiar with your, um, the five minute uh, scenario, I had to do it myself. And it was like, yeah, what do I zero in on? And fortunately, I, I went to Toastmasters for quite a while, and the, everything is timed. So I knew how much I could say within five minutes. Um, and it really, um, it, it helps you hone your message as well, right? When you take snippets of, you know, whatever your title is, um, a little piece of what it is you're delivering and a little bit about yourself, right? I always talk about whatever, gardening or my cat or, or something stupid. And, and that's just thrown in there to, to make some kind of a connection. So um, I like what you're talking about, the different, uh, the different timeframes. Of well, those. the different stories too. So depending on your topic, if you have three different topics, you might have three different stories that you tell depending on the content or the lesson you're trying to teach or whatnot. And so I always know which story I always have to think, okay, which story am I telling this group, right? And it might be based on the group or the attendees instead of the talks, you know, if it's all women versus a co-ed group, for example, right. there might yeah. be a power, more powerful story. Yeah. That's great. I love that. That's 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 interesting to put your uh, a different story with each topic. That's cool. Um, so let's talk about we you mentioned the three types. You know, speak for free, paid speaking, paid to play. So now I am giving my um, fantastic content from the stage. How do I make an offer, or how do I get to the selling stage? That's funny. So I don't make a lot of offers from stage. I, if I do, it's, it's an easy yes offer, which is what I've, an easy yes, right? Something that makes it stupid silly for someone not to get because it's such a great deal. And if they like trust and connect with me and they resonated with my talk and what I was sharing, they would have no hesitation in getting it. So an easy yes offer is under 200 bucks. Uh, so most of us would invest 200 bucks or less or you know, 97 bucks to try someone out. It's a try you out offer. So that's one of the things that I recommend. Um, but again, there's so many things to know here because, okay, so if you're in person, right? And you're doing a speak to sell, or speak to make an offer and you're newer when the beginning, all I did was make an offer to a call with me or get my free thing, get on my list, right? Because I didn't want to mess up the offer and not get anybody. So I just did like, you know, come get my free thing. Here's my free thing. Go to my table and sign up for my free thing or sign up for a call with me or fill out this drawing slip and I'll give away some books or whatnot. And that is the best way for someone who's not good at selling from stage, um, that's how I'd recommend you did it. Now, as you wanna start practicing and getting better at selling, then try the easy yes offer. Try something really inexpensive. And you have to reverse engineer, design that offer based on what it is you ultimately want to sell. So if you ultimately wanna sell coaching, then, and it's thousands of dollars, then you kind of need to have a conversation with your potential prospect, right? So don't just make an offer for a recorded training or something like a, go to my giveaway or go to my, you know, three-part video training or do my five-day challenge or whatever. 
where they're not going to have a call with you. I actually say include a call in your easy yes offer, plus maybe an online training or a ticket to your event or a book. I, I do all of those four things for 197 bucks. And that is where people can get a huge introduction to me for a very low investment. Um, and so if you could do that, that's like makes it really easy to do a package deal. Yeah. But you want to get the call in there. And I know it's not your regular price. So most of you probably charge more than $197 for one call, right? Hopefully, if not, raise your rates. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then uh, it's just a try you out introductory price. You don't have to continue you know, charging the low rates, but it's, it's people that have never in, been introduced to you before. And so you want to give them a good deal to try you out. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's important to try to have that conversation um, because they need to get to know you. If they've only seen you speaking somewhere, this, this is like anything, email or, or social media, people need to see you and connect with you. But if you have a conversation, you're going to get deeper into what uh, what their challenges or what they're looking for. So that's well, and we're talking about content development, right? So like when you're in person, hire someone or have somebody videotape you in person. It's really good to have video of you on a stage, whether it's on a stage or on the floor in front of a room. That's the key, yeah. right? Same thing goes when you're speaking virtually. You want to make sure you're recorded. You can get the recording uh, and, 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 it, and you have that content, that piece of content. Yeah, exactly. It is. And speaking is content creation because if and most people aren't selling from the stage um in in this environment so um you're creating value you're educating or entertaining uh, again kind of like what we've been talking about um today uh, are there any questions about speaking for katrina or marketing your speaking well, I would also add to while they're thinking is that you can uh, virtually now, okay, you can make offers. You really have to make sure your website is ready. This is the key with virtual speaking and Zoom calls and stuff like this. You have to use your website as the hub of your business. And I've been saying that forever, but more so now than ever, you have to be able to whip together a page to take people to for this special offer or whip together a page to sign up for a free thing or have a call with you. You need all of those pages on your website and you need to have the little blurbs like I put in the chat. You need to have these little blurbs with links to the website and the full link to the HTTP please uh, so they can click, right? And so you need to have all that prepared if, if you're speaking for sure, but even if you're an attendee at an event, because that is how you're going to make money every single day, every single day. Yeah, it's about being visible and, and being able, it's like, oh, I should put something in the chat. But like you, um, you've always got something ready and it just, it, it makes you visible. And that's, uh, you're engaging with people, you're showing yourself. Um, and as uh, someone I know, like yourself, says you should always be marketing. <laughs> always be marketing. I know I say it all the time. Uh, yeah. But you don't have to be salesy or pushy to be always be marketing. No. Always be thinking about how can I interject my thing? How can I post something? How can I, you know, uh, talk about what I do? That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the biggest mistakes about speaking or avoiding speaking? Well, the biggest myths that I see, there's like three myths that I talk about. And number one is you just need to tell your story. Just go up and tell your story. Everybody will love you. And then, you know, money will just fly in your face. That's not true. You need to have some structure around your talk. So I talk about like four things you have to do in the intro of your talk and how to position yourself and you have to position yourself, your topic, your audience and your offer in that intro, whether your intro is two minutes because you have a 15 minute talk or your intro is 15 minutes because you have an hour or a 90 minute talk, you have to do that. And then the second, and then plus tell your story, plus give the content, plus have the close, then the transition to the whatever offer or, or next step. 
And then the second myth is you just need to put yourself out there. Just put yourself out there. You'll get invited to speak everywhere. No, you have to physically go and apply and ask people constantly. There are no magic pills to getting booked to speak. And if you want to hire someone to book you to speak, good luck. I've been trying to find someone to book me to speak in person and at events and things for years. I have plenty of speaker friends that have been trying to do the same. And it's really, really not easy to find somebody who is so intuitive on where they need to go to do this. Um, it really needs to be a speaker in your field to do that for you. So pretty much you're doing it yourself. So you need to learn how. Uh, and then you e can easily get paid to speak. <laughs> uh, people say, I'm just gonna get paid to speak. Okay, great. You know, like, I hope you have a backup plan for that yeah. <laughs> revenue generation because it's not as easy as you think. And most people start out with like 500 or a $1,500 speaking fee. Uh, and then, but where you really make your money is when you're in the 15 to $25,000 speaker fee, like Les Brown and Marion, you know, all these people. And, uh, it's a very small percentage of people who get that kind of money. So you got to be really good. You got to really hone your skill and you got to practice and you got to take training and you got to do lots of stuff around that if that's your goal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Getting paid to speak. Um, <laughs> you have a pile of freebies um, in one fell swoop in one link. Tell us a little bit about what's behind your gift link. Well, there's a, um, <clears throat> a bunch of links I put in the chat. The jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings is the main link. And that has about eight different trainings on it. So there is one in there that talks about how to jumpstart yourself as a speaker, how to get some of those pieces done so you're prepared to get booked. Um, and a few tips on where to get booked and how to get booked better more often um, and making goals to speak because and then really figuring out the strategy because first you have to know what you want to sell ultimately it doesn't mean you're going to speak to sell but you have to reverse engineer design your talk based on what it is you want to sell which is why people talk about when you have a signature program then you have a signature talk to sell that program and so it's pretty easy transition, right? Just like I have the six step jumpstart yourself as a speaker training. Usually I give you those six steps in a talk that I do, and then you go get the training, right? So <clears throat> same thing goes for uh, many of the other talks. So um, get a signature talk that is designed around the kind of thing you want to teach. So if you teach someone, if you teach the seven keys to blankety blank, then make your talk the seven keys to blankety blank. And you don't have to give all the information in your talk, give a snippet. We call it an appetizer platter, right? You can give a little bit of info about each step and then tell them where to get more. Or we do a deep dive, which is take one or two of the steps, show them the seven steps. <clears throat> like I have a talk on the eight secrets to a consistent money making business. Okay, this is one of my little handouts for in-person, which is a great thing to do, you guys. And then guess what? My little talk is right here. Like if I forget any of those steps, oh, it's on my handout, right? So I make it really easy for myself, but also for people. Um, but I might say, okay, I have the eight secrets to a six, uh, consistent money-making business. Here's the eight secrets, take a snapshot. But we're, today we're gonna talk about number three because number three, exuding massive confidence is probably one of the biggest things to blah, 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 right? So I could go deep dive on that particular topic rather than a, an appetizer platter. So there you've got, I've got eight, nine different talks, you guys, if I had this, because I can do a deep dive on each one and each one is then a different topic. So I'm just sharing, like there's so many. So get some free stuff. I have a whole bunch of free stuff. Come join me in the International Speaker Network and uh, <clears throat> happy to connect. That's great. That, that, that's a really great strategy just even for, con for content, for um, repurposing, for breaking down um, everything. So that was great. It, Katrina, it was so great to have you here today. Another fire hose of information. <laughs> I know you're just getting started, uh, but th thanks so, so much for being here. You're welcome. Thanks, you guys.